Okay, you personal. said personal. So, so uh, we'll introduce ourselves. Go ahead, John. I'm John Finley, uh, District 5 Supervisor, Hay Fork, uh, Creek South, all the way to Ken Palm Zinga. And I appreciate all the work Cal Fire's ever done for us, no matter what. We That's, all do. Yeah, it's everybody. Um, Keith Groves, District 1, and this is the district that is starting to enter okay. that district. Uh, Judy Morris, District 2, uh, pretty much most of Wind River. Chadwick, District 3, other side of Hayfork, Douglas City, Poker Bar, around. I like to say we're in the middle and we touch everybody. <laughs> Another county CAO district person. Nice, nice to meet everybody. My name is Scott Kenny, uh, Cal Fire. I'm the PIO for Incident Management Team 1. Uh, I'll be representing as far as uh, the briefing on the fire today. And uh, bear with me, I'm from Santa Cruz, San Mateo, so as far as exact locations, um, I don't have them memorized, but I do have a general idea of a lot of stuff in this area. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give you guys an overview of what the fire has done in the past couple days, uh, as well as what we kind of predict the fire to do, how the fire has been reacting, as well as some of the operational goals that we do have uh, specifically in this area. Uh, we will talk about a little bit of weather too, which will greatly impact this fire. Um, so that's also something good to know. And then um, we'll also, uh, anything I miss or any evacuations, uh, a chief here will be able to address. He's from the EOC. So uh, ultimately, so far, the car fire, we're at 98,000 acres. 20% 20 cent, 20 containment. What we've seen is a lot more contain, containment on the south, southeast side, so the Redding area. Um, there's a lot of black on there. Uh, however, it's still hot in that area. There's still crews working in that area and still mopping up. I'm just going to work my way around until it gets to the pertinent information for you guys, okay? So ultimately, this south end right here is uh, looking pretty good. The operational goal right now is uh, we need dozer line to tie into the county road. And then obviously, they need to bring that fire to that road, whether the fire does it itself or potentially firing operations. Um, on this northern, eastern aspect up here, um, it was looking really, really good. Uh, they're going to try and utilize the UHV roads, so some of the hiking trails, some of the trails that are up in that area, open those up and try to utilize those as a fire break. Uh, you're seeing a lot of backing fire in this area, so depending upon what the weather does, um, that could be either an issue or not issue, but right now it's just we're seeing some uh, backing fire behavior, which is good. Now up into the west and the northwest end, um, the ultimate goal yesterday was to utilize a contingency line, which is now the main line, which is County Line Road. And that was to try and hold the fire there. There's a couple of pieces of infrastructure that was actually really, really important on that line. Uh, one being the repeater site, because that was uh, a big uh, communications uh, infrastructure for fire crews, and uh, try and hold it at the county line. Uh, yesterday, when the fire hit the county line in certain aspects, they were seeing around 100 to 200 foot flame length. So with that, there's huge potential and a huge threat for embers crossing the line. Uh, the fire did cross the line in a couple sections, uh, here, here, and up above as well, up to the north. So currently right now, the goal is to try and hopefully go direct on these, um, get line around them, and if need be, fire around those lines. But they're gonna try and go direct on some of these uh, slop overs right there on the line. Ultimately, they're still trying to hold the line. They're also looking at potential uh, new contingency line. And just for reference points for you guys, this, this is 299 that runs right through here because I see this map is a little bit far away for you guys. And then uh, right in here, this is Trinity Dam uh, Boulevard. So just for your reference on where this red is, this red is as of 7 a.m. this morning. So weather-wise, what we're seeing is we're out of the red flag warnings as of 0800 this morning, so it's 8 o'clock this morning, which is a good thing. Last night, what we saw was some really good recoveries. We're talking about 50 to 60% RH increases. More moisture in the air means less uh, potential erratic or increased fire behavior. Um, so those are good news. What you are going to see is your local uh, winds and weather trends to start coming back. So at about midnight tonight, we're anticipating those down canyon winds to kind of return um, and more of your local factors. So in this area with heavy timber and steep terrain, um, you're going to start seeing those things make those uh, normal runs that you may see in a, a heavy timber fire, fire like that. So. Um, but we are anticipating some higher recoveries at the night. I think it's about anywhere between 40 to 60% RHs we're hoping to see 
throughout this uh, the burn scar area. So that will be good for uh, fire suppression. Now, some of these ridge tops, they may crest and get above that inversion layer. They may see some hotter, drier, so you may see some increased activity on some of these ridge tops. So um, that's one thing to know. Uh, earlier this morning, some of you guys may uh, already have know, uh, already know, but the uh, large transmission lines that runs over past a uh, uh, county fire line uh, and onto the Shasta Trinity or the Trinity Dam. Those are re-energized. Um, the last I heard was 10:30, but it was supposed to be energized. But I'm hearing that is already energized. So um, something to note there. I'll go ahead and clear yeah. that up. So the the power out of the dam has been energized, but yes. the, the the lines in the car have not been energized yet. So from Whiskey Town energizing lines, they're going to try to do that this morning. From here to the dam, or which from, from Whiskey Town to our Trinity Dam. Okay. They're going to try to energize those today, which gives us a lot more stability on our power. Yes. Plant. The last I heard was 10:30. Okay. They are going to energize that. Now, barring that, um, fire crews that are working in that area, um, if they need to and it's uh, a hindrance or a life safety, they have authority to shut those down. So, barring what this fire does, um, those lines will be energized unless uh, fire crews deem it unsafe. Uh, as far as the evacuations, uh, Chief here uh, will touch on that. I just want to state that there, Weaverville obviously was put under an advisory that has been lifted. So uh, Weaverville is not under an advisory of evacuation, but evacuations has uh, moved to the Douglas City as far as there's a roadblock at Highway 3 there in the Douglas City area. Um, information is being posted all throughout Weaverville. We've got uh, information posted at the market, post office, fire stations, as well as uh, at the evacuation center. And we're doing a briefing at one o'clock today at the evacuation center. Okay. Um, that will be every day at one o'clock. So if anybody needs to have any information or update or ask any questions, we will be available at one o'clock at the evacuation center. Is there any questions? Is MODIS being used anymore? Uh, there's no updates in the past day or two, at least as it's moving. That, I don't have any information okay. on, but I can get back to you on that. It doesn't matter. It's not a, a little pop-up when I see it. And how, what's the percentage uh, in your district of, of USF as compared to Cal, uh, Cal Fire and uh, BLM? They're, right now, they're right on the edge of, of hitting into the Forest Service. Um, so we have a lot more Forest Service. So okay. yesterday, the Forest Service told me, and, and I mentioned it uh, earlier, and you'll see that they were talking about a unified command starting today. Service, do we have any information on that? Uh, as of right now, I don't have any information as far as um, what their role and involvement is. If any, uh, but we are, I mean, once it hits that area, if we're not already, then we'll, that, that'll be looked upon by the uh, Energy Management Team. If there's any contention or anything, I'm sure Keith would be more than happy to step in and help smooth everything. So, yeah, just when if it does move, and hopefully you guys can hold it where it's at. Um, do you drop totally out and Forest Service just takes over in those zones, or you no. just... No. Uh, once we enter Unified Command, all resources are alike, so private hired do or dozers, water tenders, Cal Fire, state or local agencies, doesn't matter, it doesn't matter the territory, we will all work to suppress this fire no matter where. You've already been doing this anyway with the, the area, some of the national, national park, national forest are down there already, and Cal Fire. Yeah, we're already in Unified already Command with Not you. Yeah. No, we're already in unified command. We're already working with multiple jurisdictions and multiple agencies. Absolutely. Right. There was a, a spot fire around uh, the Grass Valley watershed last night. Uh, in reference to this map? Yeah. Oh. the line is of concern absolutely right um, does not mean it's not unattended or there isn't any plan there are contingency plans in place um, and and I can talk about a few of those so Grass Valley is way over here as far as this map goes this map it, it picks up uh, essentially they utilize IR uh, hotspots that sort of thing 
Um, and um, unless there's a red out in that area, more than likely there's probably not hot spot. Okay. Um, I can't confirm nor deny that, but okay. at least uh, our, our mapping systems aren't picking that up at all. Got it. All right. Um, if there is, and more than there will be crews on it for sure. Okay. And I just wanted to, uh, under Sheriff Thompson, just share that. So. Okay. Yeah. You may be able to address uh, some of the back questions that are already in place. Uh, any other questions for myself? So uh, go when, ahead. Um, we also have concern on uh, what's on top of Shasta Bali. There's uh, the repeater station. There's a lot of communication network up mm -hmm. there on that Shasta Bali, and I know that was a couple days ago a big concern. So I know there's a lot of effort to keep that safe. I'm assuming it is, but yeah. So yesterday's tactics was obviously to utilize County Line, County Line Road um, as a fire break. <laughs> Uh, go in with bulldozers, reinforce that as much as they possibly can, and then utilize our fixed wing aircraft to come in and drop fire retardant on the area to, to support it. Now, unfortunately, with the, the winds change from the south-southeast, what that did was push a lot of the smoke up in this area. You guys all obviously experienced that yesterday. Um, visibility was very, very low, so as far as aircraft getting in the area and, and being utilized, um, Unfortunately, I don't think we were able to get as much as we wanted in that area. Um, they are still going to, the plan currently is right now to utilize uh, helicopters for dropping a hot spotting down here and then using all of, a lot of our aircraft up in this area, uh, fixed wing uh, airplanes to um, suppress this fire and drop retardant on this area to slow the progress down. Uh, barring visibility, smoke, and that sort of thing. So did they get up and were able to drop anything yesterday? I know that was the intent. That was the intent. I don't know if they were actually able to get up and actually uh, achieve any progress in that area. Um, I do know the bulldozers were working diligently in that area, um, but as far as the aircraft goes, I don't know if they were actually able to be utilized. Okay. So one more question just on Claire. Uh, you still plan to try to hold it County Line Road, and then but when slop overs come around, you're just going to manually try to yeah, so there, there's certain sections of County Line Road here. There's there's portions of this road that they're going to try and um, not only go direct, but they're going to try and tie in another dozer line okay. up and uh, wrap around it. Um, there's other sections up here that they're going to try and go direct and then um, plan accordingly, see what they can do, uh, and then also obviously come up with a backup plan just in case. Um, sections up here, I had mentioned that they are looking to, actually, I don't know if I mentioned this uh, but they're, they're looking to try and uh, tie a dozer line in just so they can cut off this section, the, the southwest section according to the north part of this fire. Um, so that way there isn't any lateral movement down in that direction. Uh, what about backfires coming up out of the woods in that area? Are you planning to do any backburns? If, if the weather conditions are right and the fire behavior is uh, uh, aligned with it, then yes, we, we will utilize fire to put fire out but that's under specific um, situations and guidelines. So um, if the situation arises, absolutely. We'll use every tool in the tool book to suppress this fire, um, barring that it's safe to do so and we're able to control it. Because I, I was telling um, Mike earlier, or yesterday, that certainly uh, members of this community are very sensitive to that tool when yep. used. So, because um, <laughs> it has gotten out of hand in the past mm -hmm. and produced many, many I uh, appreciate that heads up. Mm -hmm. um, it is a tool, when, I, I it is a, a fantastic tool, tool when used right. Right, exactly. Um, our incident management goals is obviously we've got a checklist and there, it's we abide by it and as long as the conditions are right, the fire is favorable, same thing with the weather. Um, it is a tactic that um, can and will be utilized. Mm -hmm. Bobby, you got anything? No, sir. Anything else? Not at the moment. Turn it over to you for anything that I may have missed. Thanks, Scott. Uh, good morning, Mr. Chairman, uh, board, uh, CEO. My name is Mike Hardy. I'm an incident management team one liaison officer. My incident management team one has assumed uh, command of the car incident as of Wednesday night. Uh, uh, my assignment right now is to be a representative uh, for the Trinity County uh, EOC, and I've been there for the last two days. 
Um, thank you, Scott, for that update. Uh, my my uh, mission is to apprise the county and uh, to assist the EOC with any logistical or operational um, solutions that I can. Um, Scott had mentioned uh, the um, evacuation part of that. Um, my counterparts <clears throat> are back at the um, at the command post in Reading uh, and are sitting right next to the incident operations uh, chief. And we are proactively looking at how the fire progresses, uh, not only operationally for suppression, but for evacuation and life safety as well. Um, so uh, we, we evacuate zones as needed. And then through that one uh, channel, we get the word out to the, the local uh, sheriff's office who, who is uh, statutorily in, uh, responsible for evacuations and then it is carried out at that level. And we've been doing that for the last obviously four days. Uh, yesterday, uh, the fire uh, appeared to be doing what we wanted to do. The weather wasn't a problem. We were getting um, some, some good lines in and uh, as you know, fire uh, can be very unpredictable, and that's what happened last night. We had uh, already had pre-planned a, a zone uh, under an advisory uh, warning, which included the Lewiston, uh, the community of Lewiston, and down into Johnson City. So we had already pre-planned that that area uh, under an advisory. And as fire as the fire warranted, then and there are it hits trigger points determines when and if we pull the trigger on that next uh, pre-planned area. And the fire did uh, pick up uh, uh, last night. Uh, it did uh, cross into Trinity County on that north side, as Scott had mentioned, about 100 acres pushed in. Um, and so being uh, probably uh, very cautious uh, because this fire, the leader's intent from uh, Wednesday night when we had an unfortunate tragedy uh, life safety is the utmost importance. Firefighter and civilian life safety. So uh, they determined that they were going to pull the trigger and uh, evacuate that zone, which included Lewiston and uh, Johnson City. Under it, it's Douglas. City. Douglas City. I'm sorry, Douglas. Thank you. And um, put an advisory under the area of Weaverville. Um, so that did happen. Uh, Within a couple hours, it seemed like fire behavior backed off. Um, we, we felt comfortable that we still should have uh, Douglas City and uh, the Lewiston area under the mandatory, but that the, our zone that included Weaverville did really not uh, warrant an advisory. So there was a little, little confusion there. We did, uh, through uh, Code Red, push that evacuation warning out, but um, uh, about an hour or so, we did retract it. So. We, we could try to uh, keep some calm in, 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 that, in that area. So that, that's how that whole thing transpired with the evacuations. Um, so as currently right now, we're still under that same uh, condition. As far as if I can comment on, on the U.S. Forest Service and what, what's going on to the north up in the Feds land. So they have, the Forest Service has always been a, a cooperator with this incident due to the potential of Forest Service land. So they, they've been engaged in the fire since day one, along with the parks, uh, parks service as, as well. Uh, so uh, about two days ago, as the fire was starting to progress north, they did establish a, a branch that included the US Forest Service, where they were part of the incident um, under, the, under the command still of Incident Management Team 1 and uh, started uh, working on some contingency uh, of their own. Uh, now that it is actually officially, I understand, has gone into the forest, uh, I still don't officially know that they are in Unified, but they have from the, from the very beginning been a part of and been a, a cooperator of the, of the incident from, from the beginning. So that's kind and I of- And imagine BLM would be the same level BLM is always, it always does. Typically BLM land on, under a contract, uh, fire suppression is carried out under uh, a, an agreement with, with the state, with CAL FIRE. So even though it's BLM, it, and it, it's state uh, SRA, BPA. So they typically have the, the authority to carry out fire suppression, but BLM will also have 
uh, cooperators and representation for, for their for their land. That's great. Currently, we have a type one team on. As it moves into Trinity, is there a possibility of ramping that to a type two or type three? If it type one is the highest level. I understand that. I know. Yeah. That. So it, it, I don't. That you know, that's an operational question. Right. I, I'm a, I'm assuming before they, unless it really gets out of hand in the federal uh, lands right. there, that the, the first, pri first the, they would unify with the Forest Service. And that they would just be a participant, a participant in the incident itself, rather than have them have a set separate team. Uh, but again, I'm just speculating. No, I understand. Here. I'm just realizing you'll, you're, people get more money, more time, more response as a type one than if you ramp down to a type two or three. Right now, it's under the uh, it's under still under the authority of, of Great. Uh, our incident management team. So is there anything we can do for you? <laughs> well, thank you for that. Uh, I do appreciate that, but really that it, uh, we're here to support this county. Um, obviously, there's a lot of uh, other fires going on in the state. This is the, as far as I know, still the, probably the, the highest priority fire in the state. However, as new fires pop up, um, they, they, they do sometimes uh, take some of our resources. Uh, there's fire in Mendocino where we lost some of our strike teams and uh, some of our air resources uh, to try to just su suppress those uh, in the early goings in the first operational period so they don't get quite out of hand. So we do we do uh, share some resources, but we still have plenty of resources on, on scene here to hopefully mitigate anything that comes up and, and take care of what it needs to, to Along happen. Along with Mendo, Lake has just been devastated over the Lake. past three to four years. Yes, it has. You're right, sir. It's uh, it's been a, a, a couple of years now in a row that uh, that the state has taken a hit. Um, but um, go ahead. I have to thank um, Kim Lock, Chief Kim Lock, for his response. Yes, sir. Thank you. Uh, and, you know, as far as your question, is there anything we can do for me? I, I certainly appreciate that. But really, you know, we're here. We're here to stand up uh, this county, uh, the local government here, and anything that really we can do to support you. Uh, really, we're here for you. So we're, we're going to be here. It's tough. We know that it's hard on the community. We come in and take care of the incident and we leave, uh, but the community still has the ramifications long term of, of the fire and, and the devastating effects. So we understand that. Um, we get it. We're sympathetic, uh, but we, you know, we're, we're here to do what we can to, to support uh, you and your community. Well, we'll try to keep a copy on for you in the morning. That would so be the one thing we can do. Is keep, try to keep the power on so you can get your coffee. Outstanding. Uh, any other questions? Well, thank you very Thanks. much. Thank you. Uh, we're here uh, throughout uh, support and support until we can return. Thank you. Chris, you want to? Good morning. Good morning, Chris. <laughs> um, so as you, as you all know, uh, we started assisting Shasta County um, right out of the gate. We've sent multiple units out there um, a couple days ago when Lewiston uh, started getting evacuated or, we, or the notice came out, we pulled our units out. Um, since then, I've gone to full staff, uh, canceled days off, vacations, everybody's working, and, and currently uh, our entire staff is on shift. Um, and we split between day shift and a night shift. Um, the evacuations are pretty standard protocol for us. I mean, we've, we've We've obviously done it a lot, um, so that's that's going pretty well. Uh, one of the biggest problems we have is power going out. That is that has proved to be a challenge in in this evacuation, as it creates uh, darkness everywhere. And um, unfortunately, people have taken advantage of that darkness in the lack of alarms and the things like that, and they've made our job a little bit more challenging. Um, so I'm working on, and, and I know you guys are as well, as, as even though Lewiston is evacuated, um, that doesn't mean that the, necessarily the people at the dam have to leave. We've dedicated resources to where, if it does get to the point to where they have to get out, we will get them out um, so they can stay there longer than, than a person would be in their own home. Um, so we're working on getting that in place and getting that solid to where they're comfortable 
uh, leaving resources at the dam to keep the power on. Chris, uh, um, I would gotten a request from uh, Chief Hud about a half an hour ago that if the transmission lines out of car don't work, that if um, they will leave their personnel at the dam if there's an emergency personnel there uh, to stay with them. And that we can facilitate. Okay. Um, so even though it ties up a resource, the amount of resources that are being tied up with the power being out is exponentially worse. Okay. Um, so I can get a resource dedicated to there to where they can sit there with them and they can get escorts out. That is absolutely not a problem. So why don't you, I, I know uh, Mr. Hauser is going to go home take a nap, so maybe mid-afternoon give him a call and see if he needs somebody for tonight to stay in there. Sure, absolutely. Thank and, you. and we will get that taken care of. Okay, thank you. Um, yeah, so I mean, it's like I said, it's kind of standard protocol with a little twist. You know, it always seems like these events always throw something a little bit in there just to make it uh, slightly more different than the last time. Um, we've got a good crew. We've got considerable help from the marshal's office, from probation. Um, when we did all hands on deck, everybody showed up, and and they've been working 12-hour uh, shifts to to do what needs to get done. Um, we haven't activated law enforcement mutual aid resources yet, um, as they're not needed. Uh, if this continues, um, I'll probably need to start cycling guys out. I'll make those calls to bring some additional units in, um, but we're not quite there. We're we're still a little fresh. Um, so yeah, that's that's kind of what we're looking at, and. You know, I, I appreciate uh, everything CAL FIRE's done and the EOC. They've, they've helped support us a lot um, in getting the, the supplies and the resources we need to, so I don't have to pull units off to actually go get that done. So that's been really helpful. And then um, the CAO is, is absolutely amazing uh, with every request we've made to, to do things, and I really appreciate it. Okay, so nothing more the board can do for you, just things are working well? No, sir, I, I, you guys are doing great. And I really appreciate it. Like I said, everybody, uh, you know, all the department heads are, are literally just saying, what do you need? What do we need to get done? And everybody's really come together to, to protect the community. So. Brian, you have a question? Uh, just thank you, Under Sheriff. You're welcome. Okay, thank you. Go ahead. Um, thank you again, Chris. I know, and uh, you had some folks trying to track down some folks in the middle of the night last night. I, I learned as I was leaving the emergency ops center. So. Uh, it was very dark and people were lurking around, so thank you. Um, can you just verify, especially for the board, um, the parameters on the Douglas City um, in man mandatory evacuation? Because we're yes, understanding right. there were some parts of it, so I just want to see you know, the, the, the road so the board can... The easiest way to describe it is um, from the truck scales in Douglas City, uh, where kind of the turnout is, it's the, it's the easiest place to orient. Um, all the way to Buckhorn and north. So north would be towards the lake side of 299. All of that is um, under mandatory. And uh, if you were to kind of draw an invisible line up some ridges and, and you go up towards the lake um, and everything in between. So that's the easiest way to describe it. Uh, obviously, you know, there's there's certain ridges that it'll, it'll hook around and, and go over, but uh, yeah, that's kind of the area we're looking at from Douglas City on the north side all the way to the Buckhorn Summit. So, um, but do we still have a roadblock at Highway 3 in yes. 299? Yes, ma'am. Yes. So those folks within that roadblock would still fall within that evacuation yes. section? Okay, just want, I've been getting a lot of text and calls. And, and, and we're in talks with CHP and I know Cal Fire to uh, look if, if there's a uh, different area we can put roadblocks. We have two roadblocks on the Highway 3 side. We have one at Rush Creek a little bit down, so it, it uh, blocks off China Gulch and Rush Creek Estate, so we can have to use multiple units. Um, and then we also want to have one at uh, Trinity Dam and Highway 3. Those will probably remain in place um, for quite a while just due to the access. Um, but on, I do know that on the uh, on the 299 Highway 3 side in Douglas City, maps are showing that Highway 3 is closed. Um, so we're trying to get that fixed. Um, so it doesn't show that Highway 3 is closed, even though, as we all know, uh, when you look at a map, Highway 299 and Highway 3 actually like 
match each other. <laughs> so when they drop a closer, it says, oh, Highway 3 is closed. So we've been fielding a lot of calls, uh, letting people know that Highway 336 is still open. Um, and we have no in, uh, plans of closing that whatsoever until, unless the fire does something different. Um, but yeah, so we're trying to get that fixed today. That, that's one of the priorities is uh, letting people know that that road is open. Okay, great. Um, it, at this pace, is there gonna be any need to ask for the National Guard for help on moving or anything like that? I hope not. Right. Um, if I have to, if the power continues to go out because you know we're, we're kind of in this unknown, um, I already have uh, mutual aid resources set up and ready to go. Uh, CHP was was more than accommodating last night. Um, They're like, "Hey, I'll throw 80 at you." I'm like, "Well, no, no, we're good. <laughs> I don't need 80 right now. It was just preemptive. We might need it." So uh, my guys did a really good job last night. We pulled some uh, resources off because CHP was able to augment. Our, our patrol in Lewiston. We brought them into Weaverville, and what we've seen is the Lewiston area is pretty saturated with law enforcement, but Weaverville is dark, mm -hmm. uh, and Weaverville is really dark it when is. there's no power. <laughs> so um, you can disappear in the dark. So we brought a lot more resources in that we had in the Lewiston area, and that's why you, people were complaining that there's spotlights and all kinds of stuff. We made our presence known. I mean, we wanted everybody to know we were there. And, <laughs> and ultimately, you. one of my officers, uh, we did get in a pursuit last night, and uh, he was able to get a substantial amount of meth off the street in a pound and a half. He did a great job. Awesome. Um, so those are the people lurking around, and, and those are the ones we're looking for. So Good that's job. what we're doing. Okay. Any more questions? No, I need to keep my mouth shut. <laughs> <laughs> Bobby, don't start questions? now. <laughs> yeah, don't start. Good point, Chris. <laughs> Sorry, I had to. Good point. Chris, thank you very much, and thanks everyone. For yeah. Being there. Thanks everyone. Thank, thank you guys. I really appreciate it. I've been back and forth to sheriff's department for the last three or four days. I don't know when Chris leaves because every time I go, he's there. I go home. I go back. He's there. So he's been he's been taking care of the county. Thank you. Please th thank all your crews for all your long hours, hard work, Absolutely. and staff. All right, and with that, um, we'll go ahead and go into a, a meeting unless we have another questions from the judges. Okay. Mm -hmm. With that, I'll call the special meeting to order. Uh, John, would you lead us in the pledge? Absolutely. Please join me in the pledge. Of the <coughs> I, pledge I pledge allegiance to the flag, to the flag of the United, United States, States of America. America. And to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Okay. Uh, approve, or, um, approve a request to adopt a proclamation of a local emergency due to car fire, potential financial assistance from the California Disaster Assistance Act. Public first, no public comment, and so we'll come back and. So moved. Do you, yeah, second. Do you need the CAO to talk about it at all? Or? I do not. Okay. There's questions from the CAO. Nope. Okay, we have. Uh, uh, this is a resolution, so we've got to do a roll call. Second, first, um, everyone else then chair. Okay, okay I'm sorry, Supervisor Morris? Yes. Mr. Pepper? Yes. Chairman Gross? Yes. All right. Did it pass unanimously? It did pass unanimously. <laughs> Thank you. With that, we are adjourned.